Hi there, this is Pride Weekly. We'll start with Monday. A three-month ban on puberty blockers starts today in England, Scotland and Wales. Means no new private prescriptions can be issued to young people with gender dysphoria. The treatment's already banned by the National Health Service after a report claimed there's a lack of evidence on its safety and effectiveness. Layla Beatty's transgender and tells RTE, forget all the culture war stuff, puberty blockers are nothing to be scared of. If you start them at 10 and you're going to age 18 and you decide that, you know what, I'm actually comfortable in the biological body that I'm in, you can stop taking the blockers and your puberty begins. Okay. Like, they okay. just halt it. They don't prevent anything. Okay. They don't change anything about your body. Children already taking puberty blockers can still access them. A well-deserved four-match ban for the football player who covered up anti-homophobia messages on his shirt. Monaco midfielder Mohamed Kamara obscured them with tape during a recent game. The 24-year-old also refused to be in a photo with his teammates, supporting the International Day Against Homophobia, Biphobia and Transphobia. I think he just needs a cuddle. Come on, Mohamed, come to daddy. And a poor little man-baby suing Los Angeles County in the US over its pride flags. They were flying at the lifeguard stations Jeffrey Little worked at. He was suspended after taking some of the flags down. Reckons they violated his Christianity and caused him severe emotional distress. It's Pride Daily for Tuesday. A transgender man's donating his eggs to his sister so she can have a baby. Kenny Ethan Jones from Northwest London's doing it for Kizzy, who's been struggling to get pregnant. He's had to temporarily detransition for this through taking medication and reducing his testosterone. Says one part of the process has been especially meaningful. How the doctors and nurses have treated me throughout this process. I feel like my identity has been completely respected, no matter what room I've walked into or who I've spoken to. I don't know why I'm getting upset by that. I'm going to blame the hormones. <laughs> I'm just really grateful because um, I was worried about that. The 30-year-old, who's an author, reckons if this doesn't make him the best brother ever, then what the heck does? There's a neo-Nazi group that refers to drag queens as pedo scum. Guess what someone linked to it has been charged with? Stephen Thomas Faria, who's involved with the Nationalist Social Club in the US, is accused of possessing child pornography, hasn't entered a plea yet. Rhode Island police say they were tipped off about the 34-year-old. The group disrupts drag queen storytime events. And Rebel Wilson says the idea only gay actors should play gay roles is a load of old nonsense. There's been a debate about this in recent years, but the Australian, who's gay herself, reckons anyone should be able to take any part. She's also been talking about a fiancé's coming out experience, says Ramona's mother's finally cool with it, but her father won't talk to her. It's Pride Daily for Wednesday. We'll start with what could be the biggest injustice since Nick Jonas married Priyanka Chopra and not me. You might have heard this happened a few days ago during an Adele gig in Las Vegas. Did you just say Pride sucks? Did you come to my f***ing show and just say that Pride sucks? Are you f***ing stupid? Don't be so f***ing ridiculous. You've got nothing nice to say, shut up, alright? Oh, she'd make a sailor blush with that mouth. The clip's gone viral, but was the audience member actually shouting, work sucks? Have a listen. And one more time. The singer had actually just been talking about her busy work schedule, and she may have misheard the fan. Whoops. She is, of course, a long-term queer ally and got ordained six years ago to officiate a gay wedding. The lives of homeless queer young people in New York are being documented in a new photo exhibition. From the streets to the hearts about the resilience, courage and beauty of those who've been marginalised and made invisible by society, is the work of gay Dutch photographer Ernst Kopians. He's previously focused on elderly queer people and the intersex experience. This latest collection from the 50-year-olds part of the Photoville NYC event. 
And a rainbow pedestrian crossing and pathway have been upgraded in Sydney to incorporate the Progress Pride colours. The idea is to make the Australian city seem more supportive and inclusive. A chevron with black, brown, white, pink and blue stripes has been added, representing, amongst others, trans, non-binary and gender diverse people. It's Pride Daily for Thursday. A gay sex worker successfully settled a discrimination case in Melbourne, Australia, of a claims he was debanked. This is when a financial institution stops its services to a person or business because of the line of work. The providers of Matthew Roberts' card machine did this, so he sued. As a result, the firms agreed not to single out sex workers like this and to give staff discrimination training. Matthew tells ABC News when it all first happened, he couldn't believe it. I remember being on the phone and when I revealed my occupation, the person on the phone just hung up. I felt humiliated, I was shocked and I was speechless. Sex work was decriminalised in the state of Victoria, where Matthew is, two years ago. Discrimination based on someone's profession is illegal there. Duolingo in Russia is removing all LGBTQ plus references after a warning from the country's communications regulator. All to do with laws brought in last year restricting the publication of queer propaganda, as it's being referred to. The language apps deleted all mentions of non-traditional sexual relations, content now classed as extremist. And Star Wars has got its first out transgender actor. New series The Acolytes just dropped, starring Abigail Thorne. The 31-year-old publicly came out in 2021. A philosophy channel on YouTube has more than 1.5 million subscribers. She also advocates for trans rights and healthcare in the UK. Anyway, no mention of Star Wars is complete without my Chewbacca impression. You're welcome. It's Pride Daily for Friday. An official state apology for historic anti-queer laws in New South Wales and Australia. Up until 1984, it was illegal to engage in homosexual acts. Convictions led to fines in prison and sometimes conversion therapy involving electric shocks and even complex brain surgery. New South Wales Premier Chris Minns made the statement in Parliament. We're here to apologise for every life that was damaged or diminished or destroyed by these unjust laws. To those who survived these terrible years and to those who never made it through, we are truly sorry. There were as many as a thousand convictions a year. New South Wales is the final Australian state to apologise. A British Mexican man who says he was arrested in Qatar because he's gay and held for months on false drugs charges has been sentenced. Manuel Guerrero Avinas got six months in prison suspended, a fine, and he's being deported. It's claimed police in the Middle Eastern country where homosexuality is illegal used Grinder to set him up and planted amphetamines on him. The 44-year-old also says he was tortured and his HIV medication was withheld. And back to Australia, where they're putting the queer into Shakespeare. Romeo and Juliet's being turned into a ballet at the Sydney Opera House with same-sex pairings, which is rare for ballet. It's on for the next few nights. Artistic director Benjamin Milpier also worked on the film Black Swan with Natalie Portman who he's just got divorced from, so gloss over that bit. Awkward. I'm Kev McGraw. See you Monday. <laughs>